what is an underwriting agreement so each underwriter shall enter into an agreement with the client or body corporate on behalf of whom he is acting so he this is called as the underwriting agreement now what do we mean by issuing shares at a discount so issuing shares at a discount means the issue price will be lower than the face value of the share in case of partial underwriting when the issue is done by a single underwriter or a number of underwriters so each of the liability will be determined separately Hello everyone, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. I welcome you all to this session. In this session 1 on Corporate Accounting, let us have a look at what do we mean by underwriting. So, in this unit 1, it comprises of underwriting of shares. Now, first let us understand what is the meaning of the word underwriting. So, in relation to joint stock companies, the term underwriting means undertaking responsibility or giving a guarantee or an assurance that shares the debentures offered to the public for subscription will be fully subscribed for and in the event of failure the underwriter will subscribe for the unsubscribed shares or debentures. Now what do we mean by the word underwriting? Underwriting means there are a group of persons or an organization. It is an organization which is a guarantee to the issue. That means whenever there is an issue of shares by any of the joint stock companies, these underwriters will be the guarantors to the issue. So what is the guarantee they are giving? So in this, they will they, they undertake to purchase the shares in case the public don't purchase the shares. So whenever there is a public issue of shares of any joint stock company, the public are supposed to purchase the shares. In case there is no response from the public, then the joint stock company cannot function as a result of which all the efforts of the promoters will be gone. So in order to ensure that there is at least minimum subscription, the companies enter into an agreement with their underwriter so that they get a guaranteed minimum subscription. The underwriters will subscribe to the unsubscribe portion of the share in order to see that the uh, company starts functioning. So it is a contract between a company and an underwriter by which the underwriter agrees to take up and pay for such number of shares or debentures not subscribed by the public. So all shares and debentures which are not subscribed by the public, these underwriters will agree to purchase them. It is an undertaking that if the public fails to take up the issue, the underwriter will take up the unsubscribed part of the issue. Then, who is an underwriter? The persons who underwrite the shares and debentures issued by the company are known as underwriters. According to SEBI, underwriter means a person who engages in the business of underwriting of an issue of securities or of a body corporate. So, he is an underwriter who undertakes to purchase the shares of a company. Now, let us see differences between underwriters and brokers. So, underwriters under take themselves the responsibility that the shares or debentures will be fully subscribed and in the event of failure they will subscribe for the shares of the not taken by the public. Now underwriters they undertake the responsibility that in case the public don't buy the shares they are ready to buy the shares. But in case of brokers they do not undertake the responsibility of subscribing but merely canvas and induce the customers to subscribe to the shares or debentures. But in case of brokers, they just canvas on behalf of the company. They don't have any responsibility to buy the shares. Now, since the underwriters undertake the responsibility of shares, they undertake the risk. The brokers do not undertake risk since they do not undertake any responsibility. Now the second difference is underwriters will be assuming the risk of the company whereas the brokers don't assume any risk of the company. Then underwriters charge a commission for the underwriting services whereas the brokers charge a brokerage for the service. 
So, for in case of underwriters, they are paid a commission for the services, whereas the brokerage will be paid for the brokers. Then, what is an underwriting agreement? So, each underwriter shall enter into an agreement with the client or body corporate on behalf of whom he is acting. So, he this is called as the underwriting agreement. So, underwriting agreement means it is an agreement with the client. So, that is the body corporate. So, the whatever the agreement they have mentioned if they sign it together so that becomes the underwriting agreement now let us look into what is underwriting commission the consideration payable to the underwriters for underwriting the shares or debentures is called as underwriting commission now whatever is the commission payable as per the sebi guidelines they have to be paid a commission so that commission is the underwriting commission so in case of equity shares the commission paid or agreed to be paid should not exceed 2.5 percent of the price of the shares at which it is issued or the amount so 2.5 percent of the issue price is the fixed uh, price of commission which is payable under the articles of association in case of preference shares and debentures the commission paid or agreed to be paid should not exceed 2.5 percent of the price at which they are issued or authorized by the articles whichever is less now this commission payable it is the mandatory for all the companies to pay 2.5 percent of the issue price as commission to the underwriters or the whatever is mentioned in the articles of association so if the articles of association mentions that it is 1.5 percent payable so whichever is less has to be paid to the underwriters then what are the merits of underwriting so it is very useful for companies which want to raise funds by the issue of shares and some of the merits are they give guarantee for selling the shares or debentures the company is sure of getting the value of shares issued so the promoters of the company are free from any worries for arranging the capital so here the merits is so the promoters are free from arranging the capital because the underwriters are guaranteeing the issue then they give assurance for subscribing for the entire issued capital so then there is no fear of under subscription since there is full complete underwriting so in complete entering the entire issue will be taken up by the underwriters so there is no fear of under subscription for the companies then underwriting fulfills the requirement of minimum subscription so it is mandatory for all the joint stock companies to have at least a minimum subscription so in these underwriters they guarantee the minimum subscription for the companies then underwriting creates public confidence it enhances the goodwill so it creates public confidence and enhances goodwill so it facilitates wide distribution of securities so there is large scale distribution of securities their person specialized skill and experience in the capital market the company may get expert advice from the underwriters in matters of security marketing of security so the underwriters they will be very specialized and skilled in the dealing in the capital market so they will be able to properly advise the company regarding the marketing of the shares so when the shares are underwritten the problem of issuing the shares or debentures at discount does not arise so whenever the shares are underwritten so there is no need for issuing shares at a discount now what do we mean by issuing shares at a discount so issuing shares at a discount means the issue price will be lower than the face value of the share so this is done to attract more shareholders or to attract more subscription from the public now when the shares are already unwritten so what happens is there is no need to issue the shares at a discount then next let us go in for the sebi guidelines so underwriting is not mandatory the issuing company has to decide whether the issue is to be underwritten or not so the minimum subscription of 90 percent of the offer is not received the entire amount received as subscription has to be re refunded to the public and this clause is applicable for both for the public companies and the rights issue so what are the sebi guidelines regarding underwriting so they say that underwriting is not mandatory so it is not compulsory for all the companies to underwrite 
then they can, it is purely optional. If the companies want to get the shares underwritten, get it done, but otherwise it is not mandatory. However, it has laid down that uh, at least there should be a minimum subscription of 90% of the issue has to be subscribed by the public. So, which is mandatory for both the public and the rights issue. So, because of which most of the companies, they undertake this, uh, they have this underwriting agreement. Then next guideline is agreement should be filed with the stock exchanges. So, whatever agreement the company enters into with the underwriters, so that agreement should be filed with almost the stock exchanges. Then the registration number of the underwriter is to be quoted in all correspondence with the SEBI government authorities and the clients. So, whatever is the registration number of the underwriters, so it should be mentioned in almost all the documents whenever you are dealing with the SEBI, or whether you are dealing with the government or whether you are dealing with the client, the registration number of the underwriters is essential. So, the SEBI may issue warning letters of penalty advances by which the underwriters would be forward in respect of their omissions. So, SEBI may issue warning letters to the under, or penalty advances by which the underwriters may be forewarned in respect of their omissions. Suppose they are omitting in any of their uh, dealings with the companies, if any of the clauses are omitted, then the SEBI is there to forewarn the underwriters. The total underwriting obligations under all the agreements should not exceed 21 times the net work of the underwriter. So, whatever is the total of the, so what the underwriter's net worth should not exceed 21 times of the underwriter's issue. So, these are the various guidelines and then again here we have the prospect is issued for public issue of of the shares should contain the name of the underwriters if any. So, the SEBI has also made it mandatory to just print the names of the underwriters in the prospectus and prospectus issued for public issue of shares should include a statement from the directors about the adequacy of the financial resources of the underwriters to discharge their duties. So, they, it is necessary for the SEBI. So, the SEBI has said that the prospectus issued should include a statement from the directors about the adequacy of the financial resources of the underwriters to discharge their duties. So, the directors have to issue a statement in the prospectus stay, saying that the underwriters are financially sound and they are in a position to do underwrite the shares of that particular company. Then next let us look into what are the types of underwriting. So, in this the first one is joint underwriting. Now, what do you mean by joint underwriting? When two or more underwriters jointly underwrite any of the shares of debentures of a company in an agreed ratio, so it is called as a joint underwriting. Then what is complete underwriting? When whole of the issues of shares of debentures is underwritten either by a single underwriter or by two or more underwriters, it will be known as complete or total underwriting. So, when the whole of the, when the entire issue is underwritten by the underwriters, by a single underwriter or many underwriters, that we call it as the complete underwriting. Now, the types of underwriters, we have the partial underwriting. So, it is an agreement whereby an underwriter undertakes responsibility for only a part or a portion of the issue of shares or debentures. Now, in this partial underwriting, the entire issue will not be underwritten by the underwriters, only a part of the issue will be underwritten. So, that we call it as the partial underwriting. The company itself becomes an underwriter for the remaining part of the issue. So, the company for the remaining part, suppose there is an issue of 1 lakh shares and only 75,000 of the shares are underwritten, then for the rest of the 25,000, the company itself becomes the underwriter. In such, the liability of the, the, the underwriter may have be a single underwriter or several underwriters. In such cases, the liability of the single underwriter 
and several underwriters is determined separately. Now, in case of partial underwriting, when the issue is done by a single underwriter or a number of underwriters, so each of the liability will be determined separately. Next, we have pure or conditional underwriting. So, it is an agreement whereby the underwriter agrees to take up only that portion of the shares or debentures not taken up by the public. In this case, the liability of the underwriter arises only when the share is not fully subscribed by the public. So, in this case, the, we call it as the open or pure or conditional underwriting. Only when the shares, uh, when the public don't subscribe to the shares, so such shares will be taken up by the underwriter. So, this we call it as the pure or conditional underwriting. Then, Next, last one is the firm underwriting. So, it is an agreement under which the undertaker agrees to take up a certain number of shares or debentures definitely for himself irrespective of the fact whether they are subscribed to the public or not. So, this is a definite number of shares which the underwriter is agreeing to purchase. So, these are called as firm underwriting. The underwriter is bound to take up a specified number of shares underwritten by him in addition to the unsubscribed shares or debentures. Even if the, over is the issue is oversubscribed, the underwriters are liable to take up the agreed number of shares. So, even if the issue is oversubscribed also, the underwriter, if he says that he is purchasing a fixed number of shares, then he has to do so. Now, let us look into what is the meaning of the word marked application. So, application forms which are stamped with the name of the underwriters or brokers are known as marked applications. So, if the application has the seal of the underwriters or brokers, they are called as marked applications. So, it helps in identifying the applications received through various underwriters. It is useful in determining the number of shares applied for under a particular underwriter and also the amount of commission payable to each underwriter. It helps in fixing up the responsibility of each underwriter for the unsubscribed shares or debentures. So, marked applications means they bear the seal of the underwriters and it is helpful to in uh, knowing who is uh, through whom the applications have come and it will also help in calculating the underwriters commission. Next, we have the unmarked application. Application forms received by the company without the stamp or seal of the underwriter is known as unmarked applications. Now, uh, we have have this calculation of the statement of underwriters liability. So, we write like this if there are more than uh, two uh, three underwriters then we write it in three uh, we have three amount columns then we write the gross liability in the ratio and then less the unmarked applications and whatever is the balance becomes the underwriters liability. Now, in case there are both marked and unmarked application first we just deduct the unmarked application from the gross liability we get the balance and then the marked application and then whatever is the balance becomes the net liability of the underwriters. With this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed this session on underwriting of shares. Thank you.